So I'm going to go ahead and uh, try and work on some of these junk kits picked up a while ago. Sorry. I'm trying to prepare for a video without preparing. Uh, anyway, I got some parts in. I ordered some LCDs for these uh, kits, and I ordered some, um, whatchamacallit, the little flat flex connectors. I don't actually have the flat flex connectors in just yet, um, but I do have one extra that I can sort of salvage parts from. These flat flex connectors that... Uh, that these kits use are actually the same flat flex connectors that you would use if you were building a kit that would use DS light screens for something. The connector is the same. So I just happen to have one laying around, but I only had one. All right, I'm gonna try and use this, uh, this console here just as a test bed. Actually, you know what? Let's continue taking this apart. Because there are a couple things I actually want to test out. So I ordered some LCD screens here, these things. Uh, now these do have the touch screen on them, which we absolutely do not need in uh, for what we're going to be using them for. But these screens themselves are designed to be installed in a Palm Centro 685 or a Palm Centro 690. Um, obviously, they're going into Game Boy, but you know, the more you know. Anyway, the screens are like three bucks a pop, so I picked up a whole bunch. Just want to make sure they work. All right. So this Game Boy doesn't even have a screen in it, but that's fine. Let's see if we can't get this thing working. I'm going to dump this whole thing out. Alright, so I know both of these kits are good, and both of these kits should work on a Game Boy Pocket. But... I only have one pocket cable. This gets installed like that, and we need a wire, which conveniently is right here. This is going to go into this thing. Kind of doing this backwards. Should slow down before I mess something up. I think I got that tinned already. the d-pad without losing the d-pad memory. that's whatever <laughs> it's just one of those nights I'm gonna remove that for now sorry I'm scatterbrained this is not the first video I've done tonight Let's try out one of these palm screens. It should work even with the touch screen, but we're going to want to remove it for final install. And I did have a game. Yeah, that's what they And it seems to work. 
probably can't even see that. Because of the angle. Or all the lights, I don't know. It's not booting my game though. Which I'm sure is a good thing. There it goes. Probably should have power cycled it, but you know. Oh, of course that's Prism, so it's not even going to boot on this thing. Ugh. Oh, hey. Here's Mario Land. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Cool. So I'm just going to go through one by one, make sure all these new screens work. These things were literally $3 a pop, so I just bought five, even though I only need like three. Um, I bought them, the company I bought them from actually ended up shipping me a bunch of iPhone LCDs instead, which, I mean, not really that big of a deal, not a deal breaker, because they're worth literally five times what these are worth, but... It's kind of annoying because I have zero use for iPhone screens. Uh, anyway, I did end up shipping them back because, like I said, I don't really need any iPhone screens. And, you know, they gave me a prepaid label anyway, so what the hell. And they did ship me the screens I needed, so I'm okay with that. So far, so good. Two more and we'll do a quick install and then we'll see if I can't fix one of the kits with my uh, extra flat flex connector. Of course this is these I'm testing these screens with a known good kit or known good adapter I guess. I think we're good to go for all of them. Neat. Alright. So, I'm going to set all these aside but one. Got some lights back in here. So, for these screens in particular, uh, we don't even need this touch screen. I mean, if you're installing this in a... Uh, Palm Centro, which is what it's designed for, you probably want to keep that touch screen. But unfortunately, I think this is glass, which means taking it off might break it. But that is a risk I'm willing to take. That's why I bought five. Yeah, that certainly feels like glass. That's probably why a lot of these LCDs come with no front uh, frame on them. Because it's easier to just remove the whole frame. But I'm going to try and keep it if I can. And I really don't care about breaking the uh, touch screen. I just don't want to have to pick up the pieces. And there goes my cat. In his defense, though, it is dinner time. Okay. So that was pretty easy. Probably don't even have to worry about all this extra adhesive. I'm just going to take off the big chunks for now. All right, so this thing is going to go in here. I 
can't remember. Does it go towards the bottom or the top? No matter. Anyway, one of the things I want to test, I got new uh, spacers made, and I put my uh, little swine up on them because, you know, they're my spacers. The hell, I can put whatever I want on them. When you order them through Osh Park, they do come with some... Uh, little nubbies that you have to file off. Go on, you can focus. There we go. Right up at the top, all the sides. I did already file this one off. And I even cut a uh, little hole in one of the sides there. So you don't have to file that away. And there we go. That seems to fit beautifully. Of course, it kind of looks bad without the uh, lens. And I do have a lens, but I'm not going to actually install this kit in this Game Boy because uh, I've got different plans for this Game Boy. But I needed something for testing. And I think good to go. I'm going to peel this off the touch screen. Stick that onto the bare LCD. And there we go. Bob Gianti. Three bucks a pop. I love it. Alright. And now we want to test I want to see if we can fix one of these. So these, of course, I don't think I can test these with a Game Boy Pocket. That would be convenient. Nope. We'll try to fix this one here. Well, I'll try. Y'all sit and watch. So the uh, problem with this one, if you can see, the uh, corner of this connector here is broken off. So these should actually come off. I don't like these. These are too big. Of course, they're the only ones I have. Okay. Oh, I didn't even see those up there. Okay. All right. So that'll come off like that. I did actually break this while removing it, but I don't really care because it's already broken. But it was a little bit rough. This one, on the other hand, is brand new, never used, and if I cannot attach the uh, just the bail, I should be able to desolder and resolder the other port. So as you can see, the bail on this one is perfectly fine. But we got to remove it because transferring over the bail should be. Quite a bit easier than desoldering and resoldering the whole connector. Unless, of course, I totally break this while removing it. But so far, so good. I did actually end up removing some of the pins. I don't really care because we're not going to reuse this port. Okay. Don't have to worry about that that on the soldered one because well, the pins are soldered. Only thing you do have to worry about is getting it all lined up. Because bending those pins sounds 
like an awful fun time. You know what? I think we're good. Or I think we're gonna be good. Nice. That is in there. Okay, let's test this thing out. I need Game Boy Color. Do I have one handy? No, those are all pockets. That's a DS. I need to go grab a Game Boy Color. I'll be right back. Went to find a Game Boy Color. Came back, looked at the time on the current video and decided, eh, I'll give it a few minutes, let it cool down. Uh, took the time to clean up my workspace too. I think, I think this is going to be pretty good. I'm excited. Back off there. And so, just for reference, this one already works, but we're going to go ahead and swap it out because that's what I do. If it ain't broken, fix it till it is. Probably gotta boot up the soldering iron. I imagine there's a touch sensor in here. I don't even have to imagine, I know. So one thing with the new LCDs, the backs aren't insulated, which isn't really a problem as long as you know that in advance, but... Okay. So this is the kit that I just put a new connector on, or a new bale at least. I'm getting that in there. I think I had that problem before I even swapped that out. This one might just need a new connector entirely. I hope not, because some of them just need a new bale, and I don't want to have wasted the one that needed a new connector. Just like that. Stay, oh, gotta connect that, huh? We'll just do one screw for now. Put it on prism because that's nice and colorful.
Moment of truth. Ooh. There it goes. It's still kind of shaking. Doesn't look good. Oh, now it's good. Oh, just kidding. Oh, and the Game Boy completely crashed. I'm thinking we just need to replace that connector entirely on this one. Because now it's perfectly stable. I got brightness control. That bottom line is shaking every time I move. I think we need to get a new connector on this one. You know what? Instead of doing that though, let me just take the bale off entirely. Just pop it onto another of these PCBs. See if we can't get at least one board in here. These two, they both have bad flat flex connectors. They all have the same issue. That's clearly broken. But that inserts into that just fine. And that inserts into that just fine. So I think I would have been fine had I chosen either of these two. Okay. My cat is very vested in what I'm doing right now. Oh, fuck, I broke it. I'm going to try it anyway. Dang it. I mean, I, these connectors are pretty cheap for the most part. It's just I only have the one right now. <laughs> so breaking it kinda ruins all of my plans. Slides in there so much easier. And it's broken, but it's still seated properly, I think. Looks like it at least. Let's get that soldered down. And let's try it out. Jesus. 
Cat's doing his best Lightning McQueen impersonation, I guess. lights. So far so good. Oh, I'm still getting a little bit of flicker along the bottom there. Look at that. It's not great. Now that is probably crashed. It's probably because I just broke the freaking connector, man. Ugh. That is such a bummer. Well, shoot, I'm gonna have to try this with a new, when I get my new connectors in. That is such a bummer. I'm just going to leave it installed because it's too much effort to uninstall it. I'm just going to... Oh, no, I should because i got to swap out the connector. Ugh. Of course, I could be going through all this and it's not even the connector that is the issue. Or the bail, rather. But it's okay. Oh, I broke both sides. Well, shit. I wonder... I bet I could get this to work with some foam. That's hard. I don't want to use that. I have foam somewhere. Bear with me. I think this is a little on the thick side. I'll use it anyway. What's the worst that could possibly happen? If this works, I'm never taking it apart again. I say that, but we all know how it is. There will surely be something down the line. But if this works, it also means for sure that it's the bail that I just broke. The pressure should be good enough to hold that together. And if this doesn't work, I'll just go ahead and stop the video here. I don't need to bore you guys with taking this apart and swapping it again. And, uh, let's try it out, I suppose. It's still flickering, but quite a bit less than it was. Oh, no. 
Hmm. Might have just shifted. That's, that's the hard thing with these freaking connectors, man. Tempted to just, you know, desolder it and solder on a new one. But yeah, I guess I'm gonna go ahead and stop there. I'll put this back together with the uh, working kit, and uh, I don't know. I guess I'll save these for another time, till I get the rest of the parts in. Thanks for watching.